Hi and welcome back. We're here with the Roland TR626 again. I've modified it quite a bit. I've got the touchscreen working uh, pretty much the way I want. And I've got one more modification that I want to do before I call this project done. Uh, what I'm going to do is take this circuit that I've built here uh, and interface it to the back of the device. Um, what this is here is a couple of things. On the right here we've got a 40106 hex Schmidt trigger. Uh, it's actually running four different uh, oscillators. Um, each oscillator is going to have a potentiometer hooked onto it. Those oscillators are going to run over here to this IC. Now, this is a MAX 394. It's an analog switch and what I'm doing is I'm going to go ahead and take the clock signals that are coming off the gate array here uh, and I'm going to run them into this switch along with these oscillators uh, so that I can choose which one I want to use, whether I want to use the actual clock signal coming off the Roland TR626 or whether I want to use my own uh, messed up clock signal to circuit bend out and adjust the pitch of the tones coming off the the drum machine up or down for specific channels. And I'm only going to hook that into four of the channels because I only built four oscillators. Uh, all of these wires coming off the bottom left here go out of the switches that will turn the uh, the specific channels on or off. All of the blue wires are going to go to the potentiometers and then all of the orange wires going up and to the left are going to go off to the gate array uh, integrated circuit. So the next step is going to be to actually um, drill some holes in the front of this and get the potentiometers and switches and LEDs and all that installed and then once that's done uh, we'll go ahead and solder this in to the uh, to the back of the Roland and hopefully not break anything. Looking closer at the circuit board you can see that I've taken a 40106 uh, hex inverter and I've built it into four oscillators. Uh, the capacitors here and potentiometers at the other end of the blue leads control the frequency of those oscillators and those will replace the clock signals which control the pitch uh, for some of our drum sounds. On the other side here I've got a, a resistor and a diode uh, feedback for each oscillator and that feedback is keeping the duty cycle low. Looking at the clocks coming off the Roland, uh, they just pulse on and then right back off again. So I wanted to try and emulate that signal with my oscillators, and the easiest way to do that was to add a diode and a resistor um, feeding back for each oscillator. Once the signals are generated, they run down the rails here to the to the chip at the top, which is a MAX 394. Uh, that's an analog switch integrated circuit. It has four SPDT switches. So for every single one of those oscillators, I've got a switch, and I can either use the original signal coming off of uh, of the Roland TR626, or I can use my own generated uh, clock signal, and I should be able to select that um, with that MAX 394, uh, and all of the brown and orange leads here are going to go off to the switches and LEDs to control that. Uh, the orange leads here go off to the gate array uh, to the to the actual clock signals and to the gate array I see that receives those clock signals um, so so there's eight of those leads there and that basically describes the the circuit I'm going to try and insert into this Roland. Okay we've got the back of the Roland TR626 open you can see my spaghetti of modifications already uh, at work here the, the area that we're going to be focusing on today is down at the bottom it's these two little square chips We'll go ahead and zoom in and take a closer look at that. Okay, here you can see where we're going to try and tap into with the circuit. It's going to go in between these two chips and I have to really be gentle and pry up four of these little gall wing pins and try and tap onto them without breaking them off of the of the chip, but I don't want them to be connected to the circuit board anymore. On the other side, I'm going to have to tap on uh, to the pins that, that come off of this chip and grab the old clock signals for the switch. So I'm really, really not looking forward to the part where I desolder parts of this chip because if I mess it up, I will have effectively destroyed this Roland TR626. Um, so I'm going to be very, very careful with that one. At this point we've got our entire circuit built and for the most part installed. All the potentiometers and switches are set up on the front of the unit and uh, everything is wired in through these uh, cables here to the circuit. The circuit itself has some capped on or polyamide tape 
um, two layers of it to keep it from shorting across to the other circuit board as it's going to be in pretty close proximity and hopefully we'll get a placement where we don't get any capacitance or anything weird happening across uh, that tape. Uh, we've also got some sticky tape there to keep it from moving around. It's going to lay down there. Uh, these wires here will hook into the timer circuits there uh, once we get it soldered in. Uh, so that's going to be the final step and then we'll get to power it up and, and see whether it works. You can see there that I've desoldered the four pins that I want to connect to. Uh, I can either connect also to the pads underneath them and run a line of tape in between, or I can connect to the chip that's a little bit closer there that provides the clock signals. I'll probably end up just uh, tapping onto the pads on that chip and running some tape underneath. But now it's time to go ahead and solder some, uh, some wires to all of this and then uh, secure it. Okay, we've got all of our wires soldered down and it looks pretty good. Uh, it's delicate as all get out. I've taped it down as best I can and I'm going to probably lay some hot glue down too before I close it up uh, just to ensure those wires don't move around because any little nudging or jostling is just going to bump one of those pins all the way off and then this thing's going to be broken. So, uh, so I'm going to do as best uh, I can to immobilize everything and then I'm going to close it up and we're going to see if this worked. Okay, we've got our four oscillators and the switch circuit installed onto the Roland TR626. Uh, everything is hooked up. We've got controls for them as well. Uh, there's four potentiometers and four switches. Uh, the potentiometer controls the frequency of the oscillator and the switch controls whether we're going to use the Roland TR626's onboard clock or whether we're going to override that. If we're overriding it, there's an LED that lights up. Uh, going from left to right, the orange one there is the rim, uh, rim snare. The yellow one is for toms and congas. The green one is the hi-hats. And the blue one is the bass drum. Uh, just say it was a very successful modification. It's more one of the more nerve-wracking ones. Most of the projects that I work on are a lot of fun. Uh, this one really, really wasn't uh, for a weekend project. It was very stress-inducing. Soldering onto those surface mount chips and trying to pull and bend the pins without them breaking off is extremely stressful, and uh, and it's really, really hard not to either get a cold solder joint or uh, overheat it and just break the pin off altogether. So it's not a modification that was for the faint of heart. Uh, it requires some some soldering experience and, and hopefully a digital soldering iron uh, so you don't wreck anything too bad. But it is a lot of fun and uh, stay tuned and we'll try and do a, a little demo video here of, uh, of maybe a clip with uh, all of these mods active. Thanks for watching.